So I live here in Boulder, Colorado, and um, I go, I'm a master's student in the geography department at the University of Colorado here in Boulder. And uh, my main area of study is alpine hydrology. And my thesis research is specifically uh, has to do with an acid mine drainage reclamation site, a super fun site that the EPA is conducting. And, uh, but I also, I also run a lot here in Boulder too. <laughs> it's kind of my other, other part of my life. And um, yeah. Can you talk a little bit about you and Jocelyn and, you know, just tell me about your guys' relationship and how long you've been together and what she does mm -hmm. and stuff like that. All right, so I live here in Boulder with my girlfriend, Jocelyn Jenks, and she is a second year law student at uh, CU Law. And uh, we've been together four and a half years now. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, she's uh, obviously just a big part of my life, uh, both within running and outside of running, too. I mean, just a huge supporter of mine. Um, how, uh, how does she, how does she feel about your running? How does she, you know, does she come out and support you? She show sure. you, you know, like that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, so Jocelyn, I think in any relationship, there's always like give and take and balance. And, uh, with Jocelyn, the running, the amount of running I do, uh, which is substantial, you know, probably you know, between 20 and 30 hours a week, um, I, I couldn't do that without her, without her, like, good bidding, you know? Um, and uh, so I'm really thankful to, to have that, you know, in our relationship. Um, and she's she was a runner herself. She ran uh, college cross country and track with me. That's how we met. So she's definitely, uh, you know, we do easy runs together in the evening most days. And uh, she's crewed me at a number of races as well, uh, mostly the Lud Ludville 100. Um, but yeah, so she's a, a huge help. and key part of me being able to live the kind of lifestyle I do. Yeah, so in a peak week of training, say in the final month before tapering for a 100 mile race, um, I'm probably around the 180 miles a week level, maybe pushing to 200, 170 to 200. And that equates to uh, between 27 and 30 hours a week of running probably. And within that, uh, especially since I've been living here in Boulder for the past year and a half, I've really been focusing on a lot of uphill running. Um, so getting a maximum amount of vertical in each day, and that's between 3,000 and 5,000 feet of vertical each day um, during the week, and then on the weekends uh, doing a longer run of six to eight hours, so 40 to 50 miles, where um, I get anywhere between like 10 and 13,000 feet of vertical on that run probably. But uh, the main the main thing for me is just that consistent two hours every morning during the week of uh, like running up Green Mountain, um, just about 3,000 feet of vertical, and then like flat easy evening runs of about an hour with barefoot added in. And um, kind of like letting my body dictate how the intensity level of those runs. Like if I'm feeling good, I'll definitely press the uphill a lot and kind of turn it into a tempo run. But if I'm feeling kind of uh, fatigued and worked, um, I'll just like won't push it and, and let my body just run up the hill at whatever pace it wants to. And, by having sort of that intuitive feeling um, of where your body is in terms of stress levels and fatigue, uh, I think it helps me be able to do that level, that volume of training over a, you know a number of weeks leading up to a big race without getting injured or overtraining or burned out. So that's kind of the. There's no real structure in terms of I'm going to hit this workout and that workout, other than that I want to get in a good six to eight hour longer on the weekends, um, and then like a total of three hours of running per day during the week. So kind of the general those are like the, the ground rules <laughs> uh so my on the run hydration and and nutrition varies between training and racing and during training um any run shorter than three hours i generally don't bring anything with me uh like calories or or liquid um especially when it's not the summertime because in the summer you know it's hotter you might need some water and i'll run that length but anything over three hours i'll bring a couple gels and uh, one water bottle and my sort of rule of thumb is like go the first two hours of the run without any calories and then start hitting in one gel per hour um, and that's just sort of to mm, get the body used to having to switch over to fat metabolism and uh, not rely so much on the like the constant sugar and uh, but then so then during a race I think the, my body responds a lot better than when I'm feeding it 200 to 300 calories per hour instead of just 100 calories per hour. 
uh, so two or three gels an hour as opposed to one. And uh, but other than that, like I just I like to keep it simple with just the gels for sugar and uh, um, S caps for salt, and, and then the the water bottle for hydration. And um, you know I might need to carry two bottles during a race because you're running a lot harder, drinking more. But uh, during training, I usually just carry one bottle and allow myself to get a little dehydrated and fill up at streams and that sort of thing. But um, generally, I, I'm, you know, I try to skimp a little bit during training and then during racing, definitely make sure I'm getting everything I need. Um, so that there's kind of that effect of, you know, extra energy boost comes from it. Uh, yeah. Yeah, in terms of like my normal eating habits, it's really, really free form. I, I kind of just eat whatever I feel like eating. Um, I mean, my stomach is sort of touchy day to day. And like when I'm running a lot, it's kind of hard for me to eat a lot because I can't have a lot of food in my stomach immediately before I go running. So, you know, I'll do the two hour run in the morning with without eating anything, like maybe drink a cup of water or something. And then, uh, I don't eat a lot throughout the day then because I'm going to go running again in the evening or the afternoon. and um, So just kind of like little snacks, something's really easy to digest, like an apple, tortillas, that sort of thing. Um, and then uh, after that, you know, in the evening, try and cook a good meal of like pasta and veggies or something like that. But no real, I don't have any, I mean, I try to eat like mostly whole foods and mostly, um, you know, not stuff that's super processed. Uh, you know, outside of gels, <laughs> those are obviously processed, <laughs> but um, because I, I mean, I just think it's better for your body and better for the, the environment and local economy and that sort of thing. So, you consider yourself like a vegetarian or what, what sort of yeah, I wouldn't, habits do you have? Yeah, I mean, my general eating habits, I'm certainly not vegan, um, wouldn't even go vegetarian, although I hardly eat any meat, um, and that's mostly for environmental reasons. It's just meat takes a lot of resources to, to grow meat um but uh i mean i eat meat every now and then but it's not something i generally seek out so I don't really have any of those clean labels that i fit into <laughs> questions i get asked a lot oh where what how much <laughs> what are you carrying when you're like on an eight hour run in the mountains you know by yourself or running with scott or somebody and the answer is like you know six to eight gels in my pockets and uh well water bottle and i'm filling up at streams and and you know, that doesn't really require, it doesn't look like I'm carrying anything then, you know, especially if the water bottle is like tucked in my shorts or something. Um, but I'm obviously taking in some calories and fluid. And then uh, people want to know where I carry the camera usually. It's in my waistband. <laughs> uh, what else? Oh, people are always wondering about shoes and, um, and usually how I'm like carving my shoes and that sort of thing. And, and since I've been involved with New Balance for a few years now, um, you know, I've and involved in the design process of some trail racing flats, it's gotten to where I don't do a lot of carving on the shoes anymore because they're they're starting to build shoes that I really have had a lot of input on and um, am happy with. So uh, it's gotten to where it's not a lot of like you know the, the kitchen knife isn't used as much anymore. But I mean that was only ever to uh, to make the differential between the heel and the forefoot as as even as possible. Um, but now we're moving to like a four millimeter drop on shoes and and I'm happy with that. That, that works good for me. So um, I don't know, those are kind of the things that always come up it seems like. Yeah. Hydration, nutrition, footwear. Right. <laughs> for me, running isn't, like the reason I run isn't necessarily to like rack up big miles and go out and crush the competition or anything like that. Um, the reason I run is to be outside in the mountains and connecting with uh, you know, that environment and those landscapes and that sort of thing. And so the whole minimalist thing is one, I find it to be uh, just a little more rewarding and comfortable to not have to be carrying a lot of gear. Um, it's just a pain when you're running uphill that you have any extra weight. And then, but two, um, 